Hey everyone, this is Mr. Isometric and welcome to another part of beginner friendly tutorial series for Blender. Now in today's video, we are going to talk about shader editor and to use the shader editor, we are going to use some add-ons. Now, which add-ons I have talked about them in my prerequisite video. So if you haven't watched that video, do check it out. I have mentioned all the add-ons to turn on and do like this video and subscribe to my channel to show your support. So the Blender file for this project will be available on my Poppy channel. So do check it out. Link will be in the description description below if you have any doubts mention them in a comment section below or you can join my discord server so without further ado let's get started okay so now let's talk about shader editor and the first thing you should do is open it to open the shader editor the fastest way is to go in the shading tab on the top and the slowest way is to split this window uh, by right clicking add a vertical split or horizontal split whatever you like it and then go on the top over there and then change this to shader editor press n and this is your shader editor over here so you can do all of that thing or you can just go ahead on the top in the shading tab and your shader editor is over here now as you can see by default we are inside the material preview mode now if you are going to go ahead and use ev or cycles to render your things i will highly recommend you guys to use rendered mode so to go there you can either click on the top right over here and then go in inside the rendered mode or you can just hold down your Z key and then in this pie menu you can select rendered mode so now we are inside the rendered mode and below is our shader editor you can totally ignore this section and this section so you can make them smaller let's go ahead and change our method to object mode now in the object mode you can apply material to your object and in the world mode we can assign environment texture to our world or you can even just go ahead and increase the strength so that you get this uh, world lighting or you can also change the color of your world it is better to just have an hdri texture just like in our material preview mode as you can see we have this hdri enabled now you can click on that arrow and then change those hdris over here but i want them in my rendered view you can get this textures this uh, environment textures they are called hdris from a website known as polyhaven now there are ton of free hdris available over there and i have my own personal library of it so as i said we are going to use nodes so when you are in your world mode hit ctrl and t and when you do that automatically these nodes will appear and this is because of node wrangler add-on that we talked about in my prerequisite video here we have environment texture so just click on open and now you need to navigate where your hdris are so my hdris are in my blender folder over here so these are all the hdris that i downloaded from polyhaven and i think i will add this artist workshop hdri in my scene now as you can see our scene is lit now let's go back to our object mode now nodes in ev and cycles they are different and i think mostly people are going to use cycles so let's just switch to cycles render engine and over here i'm going to switch to gpu because my gpu is much more faster than my cpu and i don't think we need thousand samples so i'm just going to tone it down to 200 samples now let's go ahead to apply a material to any object select the object and click on this new tab and then you can go ahead and rename your material so I'm just going to rename it to tabletop and we have this automatically blender has given us a material output node and a principal BSDF node so for this basic tutorial I'm not going to go ahead and talk about all of these sockets but just few sockets that will be very important to create your own material now let's go ahead and check one more thing so in the material properties you will see that we have the same arrangement as the shader editor so you don't have to always open shader editor you can always just go into the material properties select the object and then go over here and then assign a new material you can either click on the plus button over here or there is also a convenient plus button over here and we have the same values as we see over there 
So as you can see, when I open and close, the same thing is opening and closing over there. But I would highly recommend to not use this panel to manipulate your materials. Always come over here because this looks much more user friendly than uh, doing stuff over here. Just for your knowledge, uh, I just told you guys that same things are over here as well. So we are just going to go back to our rendered settings. So for the basic material editing, we are going to change the color of this table and to change the color we have a base color socket now principle bsdf is something that can create all the materials on its own but this materials they are separate by themselves as well so as you can see we just change the color of this table now you can uh, also go ahead and press shift a and these are all the nodes that you can add as a shader so all these bsdfs they are separate branch of their own so diffuse bsdf has the base color and roughness and normal to it so the base color roughness and normal this socket is available on this one node so you don't always have to use principal bsdf but having principal bsdf also saves you a ton of node management now all of these the things they are called nodes and you can either call uh, this thing as noodles or you can call it as wires connecting them as you can see that we have our table and it is an orange table so let's go ahead and make it a little bit more reddish uh, something like that I'm also going to go ahead and make it a little bit more darker so that it looks like a wood. This actually looks really good, but now let me just make my wood a little bit more rough. So I'm just going to increase the roughness slider like that. And for wood, it looks a little bit too specular. Now I can go into the specular tab and IOR level. I don't know why are they calling it IOR level, but okay. I can just decrease this level to reduce the specular effect. Now, what is is roughness and what is specular like what are these all sliders if i have to tell it in short then metallic slider is self-explanatory if your thing is metallic just make it one if it is not just make it zero roughness is how rough your surface is so if the light is hitting your object then it will scatter around and the more it will scatter around the more colors you are going to see but also it will not look shiny so your surface will look rough and the specularity specularity is how much rays of light it is going to send in one direction so that it looks shiny now if i reduce my roughness like this and now if i reduce my specularity to zero you'll see that i have no lighting information so basically specularity is how much uh, light is going to be even if your surface is rough it is still going to reflect some light in one direction so uh, basically so yeah specularity is the thing for that so if i make my specularity one uh, you are going to see those reflections over here and the more i make it rough the more direction that light is going to go ahead so right now even when my roughness is one uh, it is still reflecting the light but it is reflecting it in all directions so we cannot see the shininess of the material if i go down we can see our material is a little little bit smooth like the surface is smooth this sliders basically this roughness IOR metallic these are all defining the surface of your object so right now our surface is a little bit rough it is very specular uh, i can decrease that specularity so it is not reflecting that um, that much amount of light in one direction anisotropy now anisotropy is something that metallic surfaces has so for that we have to reduce our saturation so that we can visualize it a little bit better i'm also going to make my material a little bit more brighter i'm going to increase my metallicness and then we are going to decrease the let us say we have to increase our roughness a little bit more like that now as you can see our reflection it is straight forward but when i increase my anisotropy you'll see that my reflection suddenly is kind of circular or you can also make it linear by using this anisotropic rotation so this is something that you usually see on bolts on cylindric metallic cylinders uh, that are just being uh, post processed by some kind of uh, machining process so i will just make it zero so that i don't get that and let's uh, make metallic zero let's increase the roughness uh, let's get the our reddish brown color back so that it looks like a wood. 
let's make it darker so there you go um yeah this looks re really good for a low poly shading now there are some more things over here which we will talk about in future in our advanced course or you can just watch another video tutorial where they explain what principal bsdf is or what are all the sliders in principal bsdf so yeah now what we can do is we can duplicate this material by clicking over here so that we can apply it to the legs or we can create a new material over here by clicking on the plus icon and let's call it table legs it is a good habit to rename your materials by the way now what i'm going to do is i'm going to select my node and i'm going to press x to delete it now let's select our table let's select our node press ctrl c to copy it or you can just right click and then copy thing like this let's go to our legs and press ctrl v to paste it and let's plug it over here i don't want to use the same material i want to change its color a little bit that's why i did it or else you can just use same materials on two different objects so tabletop this material can also be applied over here so tabletop there you go now to access different materials you can always click on this drop down and there is a number on the left hand side of this material so table legs no object is using that material that's why there is a zero on the left hand side and usually whenever you restart blender that material is gonna get erased and to stop that you can always go ahead select that material like this and click on this shield icon so this shield icon is called fake user as i said if no object is using that material that material is going to get erased by clicking on the shield icon you are telling blender that i know that there is no object using this but just keep it you are assigning a fake object to that material anytime you see this shield icon it is for that purpose only i don't want to use the same material so i used table legs and i'm going to just make it a little bit more darker like this so that we get a little bit of variation in that table and this is pretty good for the beginner shading tutorial so this is how you apply materials to the object and you can change the material surface properties so the first thing i will say is definitely play around with principal bsdf or if you want you can go ahead and watch some tutorials on principal bsdf itself and that's being said if you still have any doubts from this video comment section is free for you all or you can join the discord server now this is something worthy of putting in in a project so this project file will be available on my Kofi for free so do check it out and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel to support me and if you want to support extra if you like blender content you can support me on Kofi and yeah hope you all learned something new and hope this video helped i'll see you in the next video tutorial bye bye